parting off. Oh yes, there it goes. And there it is. What a pretty little ring. Ooh, shiny. Hello, I'm Guy, and welcome back to the third episode in my continuing series of making this uh, Sterling engine. This is what I'm working on today, and this is what I ended up with. So I'm going to walk you through all of the steps involved in uh, cutting off this part, uh, making a mounting ring here, taking off a rib here, boring out the hole here, boring out the hole here. There's quite a lot of details in this particular section of the cylinders, so I've got a lot of work to do. Stay with me, and if you enjoy watching these videos, please remember to give me a like and subscribe so you can follow the rest of them. My first step is to part off the cylinder flush with the rib as shown here. So I'm using my slitting saw. By the way, the arbor I made for it was the first part, or one of the first parts I made on my mini lathe. So I'm getting that all trued up using a ruler, and this is a very soft material. They say it's aluminum, but it feels more like pot metal cuts very nicely, very quickly, and it turns out that the diameter of my slitting blade is almost the same as the diameter that I need to cut off. So it edges up really closely here on getting it to clear. But if I'm careful, it will just go... Ooh, yeah, perfect. Look how, what a nice, beautiful cut that is. So now I have to ream this out. Um, I started out by finding center, so I'm finding back center and front center and so forth. I'm speeding this up a little bit for you. So uh, that's back and front, that's centered. Going to the right side. And going over to the left side, bumping it out a bit so that it recenters. And now I found center, so now I'm going to use a half inch drill to start with. I'm just, there's so little material that needs to be removed that I thought a drill would be perfect. Uh, going in very carefully, very gently, just tiptoeing in because I don't want to stress the way I've mounted the whole uh, item here with the V-block in my vise. And uh, yeah, I think that was a first good pass, but I'm going to measure it just to see. And I'm a little little on the small side, 0497, and I want to go 050, ideally. So I'm using a milling cutter now to clean that up even more. So obviously this is a half-inch milling cutter with a bottoming uh, end there. And again, just tiptoeing into it very gently, bottoming it out. And maybe that's better, let's see. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. What do we got? 501, 502, that's a little over, but right there it's 499, so maybe it's it's close to 50. So now I have to remove a fin at the top, and there's a reason for that that becomes clear later in the video. So I'm rechucking it into my um, mini lathe and getting it trued in, whacking it very gently. Now it's trued to within one and a half thousandths. So I'm going to make a bunch of multiple very gentle passes. Again, gripping it this way, I don't want to stress this material and, and take any harsh cuts. So I'm doing oh, five or ten thou passes, very light. And this again is, is a very soft aluminum material that feels more like pot metal to me. It's very light, it cuts very, very nicely. So I've done a bunch of roughing passes to get close and then I'm going to double check my dimension. So now I've got a reference dimension. I, I re-zeroed my uh, DRO on the cross slide, so now I know how far I have to go. And again, taking very subtle, very gentle passes, double checking. I don't always trust my DRO because it can be off by a thousandth or two depending on the slop in the carriage and the uh, cross slide and so forth. So that, I think, is it. Yes. Gonna just chamfer off those corners a little bit, make it a little more user-friendly. Now I need to bore out the large cylinder to the dimensions called out and the depth called out, so I'm using my boring bar. Going in very gently, I'm taking very shallow cuts. Again, I don't want to stress this casting. I'm using my DRO to go to the depth called out and kind of increment my way out to the diameter called out. Let's see if that glass tube will fit in there. 
Yeah, that's just what we need. It's a very slightly loose fit and that O-ring will take up the slack. So now I need to drill three holes for 256 tap for three bolts. First thing I need to do is find the exact center of the cylinder back on my milling vise here uh, with a V block to make sure that it's held vertically and true. So I'm getting my X and Y axes centered out here. Now I'm going to use my touch DRO to use the circle finding feature. So I'm going to hit that button there to, I am at zero of course, starting at zero. Using the circle finder, so I'm going to type in the radius, which is 0.515. I've already got inches set up. I'm going to do the number of holes, which is 3, angle 120 for equally spaced holes, and starting at the angle of 0. So that's all set up. Now I can just drive to position uh, the three different points set up here, 1, 2, and 3. So that gives me all of the dimensions that I need, and I just drive to those dimensions and drill the holes. So I'm going to start with number 3. It's an easy drive in one axis to find that spot and looking at the DRO until that number zero is out. And the centering brittle just barely clears the wall as you can see there. Uh, I think it nudges up against the wall in one of them due to a slight lack of precision. No big deal. Driving over to the other two locations. And now I can drill that knowing that it's spot on those dimensions. I'm being cautious with my depth because I don't want to go too big. Now I have drilled all those three holes, so now I'm going in with the number drill, uh, which is the tap drill for 256. Get it all realigned to center. Coming back over, got that drilled through two ribs according to the diagram. So now I'm tapping them all the way through both ribs with the 256 tap. And now I'm going to make this O-ring retainer that fits over what we just made there. So they gave me a piece of aluminum cylinder, cylindrical stock here, which I'm facing off as is tradition. Get that all nicely cleaned up. Same thing on the outer edge, just going to clean it up just a little tiny bit. Uh, the outside dimension is not super critical on this, although of course they do like to call out precision dimensions. So now I'm going to take it out, flip it over, and um, set it up on some blocks so that I'm just gripping into the turned part. My particular three-jaw chuck is about eight thou out of round. Um, I can live with that. So again, hammering it in tightly there to where the uh, spacers there are just snug. Tightening it down good and tight and getting those out of the way. So now again I'm going to clean up that outside wall uh, because now I've got it all trued up. Um, I'm only concerned with the outer edge of this uh, piece of cylinder so that truing process was just to get it nice and true in the three draw chuck. Cleaning up that outside edge. And I'm going to flip around to the other cutter and face it off. Make it all nice and true. The actual stock cuts are pretty good, they're not far off. Alright, now that stock is trued up and ready for the next operations. So I'm going to go back to the mill. I've got a bunch of uh, spacers here I'm going to use to hold that up to a good working height. And I'm just going to grab that right there in the uh, vise. Knock it in firmly, seat it down. Very firmly. Okay, we're good now. So off camera I did do a center drill and now I've got my DRO set up again for that same set of drill uh, all positions. I drill two of the center drills. This is the third one. Now of course I'm drilling these out for a clearance drill for a 256 volt. The sequence of operations of assembling this was critical and I had to sit and think about this for quite a while to make sure I got everything right. So now I've got all those three holes drilled. Now I can finish all the machining operations. So I'm back over on the lathe again. And again, I, I don't care too much about concentricity on this because it's all going to be remachined. Get it all centered up. 
tighten down firmly and get those out of the way. So now I need to bore out a pretty large hole um, and I'm going to go deeper than is necessary. I think this whole thing only needs to be 0.125 deep, but I'm going to go oh, 0.250 or something like that. And then working my way up through a bunch of drills before I start uh, using a boring bar. So I think that's the biggest regular drill and now I'm using a Deming bit. Um, so this is, I think, 5 eighths close to it. Going in very gently. I don't want to rush this and have any issues to worry about. That's good and deep. So now down to the boring bar to finish out the uh, dimension called out in the drawing. And as you can see uh, with my hands in the background here, I'm actually doing everything manual carriage operation. I could have used my power feed on the carriage, but I think I, I prefer the, the feel of turning a manual carriage on operations like this. I could have set a stop in there and just driven it in and out with my motor feed, but I chose not to in this case. I'm using WD-40 as a lubricant and cleaning it out so I can take a nice measurement. So now I can see how far I have to go to get all the way out to the final dimension. So I zeroed my uh, cross slide DRO and now I'm just going to creep in taking much smaller cuts now I think probably two thou at a time and sneak up on that final dimension. Now uh, here I'm doing the recess. This is the part that will hold the O-ring. So again I've set my OD and then I went to the depth and then just pulled it across and got all of that done in one pass. Now the uh, directions call for a rounded over radius on this outer edge. So I'm doing that and cleaning up all the surfaces just to make it look pretty. They did say to um, round over both edges of this. So here I'm setting up the left edge of my parting tool to the exterior surface. And then we use my DRO, I just zeroed it out. This is the carriage DRO I'm using. I'm gonna lock down my carriage at that location. So now I've got the uh, dimension that I need. The little mistake I made here is I started parting and I was planning to stop parting and round over the other side of this part. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I had done that, but no big deal really. So I'm just going to part this all the way off. Because parting is such sweet sorrow. Thank you, Shakespeare. And boom. There's a bit of a raised edge there that's just going to come off with a, uh, a scraper, and that is good. Look at that. Pretty little part. And so it matches the drawing beautifully. It slides onto the glass, captures the O-ring, and will get screwed on. What's neat about having full-sized blueprints with this kit is that you can take the part and align it with the drawing and confirm that you did everything right. So that's the end of this video. Stay tuned for the next one in about a week. Um, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see the rest of this series or stay with me for my channel. There's a lot more coming.